more hot summery weather to come. But you can see through Monday, the heat expands further northwards. It's the lack of rain. Temperatures will be rising day on day. It's just the strength of the sun. It's been hot and dry for just a bit too long. It's got to that stage where the garden, unfortunately, is really struggling with the lack of rain. Today's episode is sponsored by Gardena, so if you are looking to improve your water infrastructure to cope with this hot and dry weather, then look no further. This patch of grass here has never ever been this brown before, and what's more is that things in the vegetable garden are beginning to wilt, like broad beans, and I've never seen that happen before. I'm on a hunt to see how our spring is doing. You see, unlike most people around this area who rely on mains water, we rely on a spring. And when you get hardly any rain for about two months, it can begin drying up. I think it's somewhere around here. Aha! <laughs> yeah, it's um it's pretty low. Most of the time of the year, this is a stream, but at the moment it's just completely dried up. And I know it sounds kind of posh and stuff, but at a vegetable garden, we usually feed it with spring water in terms of watering because Wales is known for having lots and lots and lots of rain, but that isn't happening anymore and we're not really prepared for it. And something really interesting is that it's showing some weaknesses. So we're looking at if we want to increase our resilience, then we might have to look a bit more into how we're going to cope with that water. We do the majority of our watering in the evening and I know a couple of you had mentioned on one of my videos about watering, which I did quite recently, about slug problems in the evening. I found at the moment this hasn't been the case and actually the majority of the vegetables that we're growing are at a very mature stage or the slugs aren't really too fussed about it. What you do really want to be careful though is if you want to water young seedlings. So the best thing to do instead is to water them early on in the morning because the more moisture brings out slugs and slugs just like us and the vegetables are craving some water. Because we have such a limited supply of water now we can't just leave a sprinkler system working and come back later on because it could drain the tanks. So we've got to be very careful about what we water and anything that's looking a bit wilted will give that water. But what's really useful is using the sprinkler by Gardena where we can just put this down and wherever we choose each night to water it can give an even distribution of water so we don't need to worry about puddles and also it gives me a chance to do other things like cutting some non-existent grass to use as a mulch. And I personally think the most important factor when it comes to building resilience in the vegetable garden actually starts with the soil. Like I say many many times healthy soil equals healthy plants but what I think is really important is to look at the structure of your soil because if you increase your organic matter content in soil, it means that it's gonna be able to hold on to and retain moisture for a longer period of time. And it also means when you water your plants, the water goes down into the soil. And if there's a lot of organic matter in there, it's gonna reduce drainage and retain the moisture within the soil. 
But how do you increase your organic matter within your soil? So right beside me here is our Swiss chard. And a really quick fix that you can actually do without having to worry about what's in the soil is worrying about what's on top of the soil. And this is where mulching really does come in handy. And these are fairly developed plants now. So if we mulch these, we know that slugs won't really go for them. And what we've done, actually, these are old grass clippings and we just spread a two to three inch, so five to seven centimeter layer of mulch all over and around the Swiss chard. And what this does is it acts like a blanket or insulation. So if we water it, it slowly seeps into the ground, but then what also happens is that it acts as a protective layer against the strength of the sun and the warmth, and it keeps the moisture within the soil for longer. By the way, we've got a ton of peas, and this makes me very happy. If you want to retain your organic matter within your soil effectively, what you want to do is have more of a long-term focus. So what we're really doing is every autumn or every winter, we'll cover a raised bed with a thick layer of either manure or compost. And what this does is we will then cover this either with some mypex, black fabric or anything else, maybe even carpet. And then over the winter, the microbes within the soil will begin decomposing and pulling the organic matter down into the soil. And then what we do is uncover it, give it a quick rake, and then we can plant straight into it. And this is one of our brassica beds, and these are some of our red winter kale. And what we've realized is that this bed, we put a thick layer of organic matter over it in autumn. And then we planted these out probably just over a month ago, and we did give them a good soaking when they went in, but they've hardly been watered since, and you can see how well and how healthy these actually look compared to a lot of other vegetables where the beds weren't actually mulched. So thank you very much for watching. I'm now gonna gorge on a ton of peas and red currants, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.